I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Psalms 32, 8 Chapter 1 The Secret of Guidance Many children of God are so deeply exercised on the matter of guidance that it may be helpful to give a few suggestions as to knowing the way in which our Father would have us walk and the work He would have us do. The importance of the subject cannot be exaggerated. So much of our power and peace consists in knowing where God would have us be and in being just there. The manna only falls where the cloudy pillar broods but it is certain to be found on the sands, which a few hours ago were glistening in the flashing light of the heavenly fire and are now shadowed by the fleecy canopy of cloud. If we are precisely where our heavenly Father would have us be, we are perfectly sure that He will provide food and raiment and everything beside. When He sends His servants to Cherith, He will make even the ravens to bring them food. How much of our Christian work has been abortive because we have persisted in initiating it for ourselves, instead of ascertaining what God was doing and where He required our presence? We dream bright dreams of success. We try to command it. We call to our aid all kinds of expedients, questionable or otherwise. At last we turn back, disheartened and ashamed like children who are torn and scratched by the brambles and soiled by the quagmire. None of this had come about if only we had been, from the first, under God's unerring guidance. He might test us, but He could not allow us to mistake. Naturally, the child of God, longing to know His Father's will, turns to the sacred book and refreshes his confidence by noticing how, in all ages, God has guided those who dared to trust Him up to the very hilt, but who, at the time, must have been as perplexed as we are often now. We know how Abraham left kindred and country and started, with no other guide than God, across the trackless desert to a land which he knew not. We know how for forty years the Israelites were led through the peninsula of Sinai with its labyrinths of red sandstone and its wastes of sand. We know how Joshua, in entering the land of promise, was able to cope with the difficulties of an unknown region and to overcome great and warlike nations because he looked to the captain of the Lord's hosts who ever leads to victory. We know how, in the early church, the apostles were enabled to thread their way through the most difficult questions and to solve the most perplexing problems, laying down principles which will guide the church to the end of time, and this because it was revealed to them as to what they should do and say by the Holy Spirit. The promises for guidance are unmistakable. Psalm 32, 8 I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. This is God's distinct assurance to those whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are covered and who are more quick to notice the least symptom of His will than horse or mule to feel the bit. Proverbs 3, 6 In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct, or make plain, thy paths. A sure word on which we may rest if only we fulfill the previous conditions of trusting with all our heart and of not leaning to our own understanding. Isaiah 8, 11. The Lord shall guide thee continually. It is impossible to think that He could guide us at all if He did not guide us always. For the greatest events of life, like the huge rocking stones in the west of England, resolve on the smallest points. A pebble may alter the flow of a stream. The growth of a grain of mustard seed may determine the rainfall of a continent. Thus we are bidden to look for a guidance which shall embrace the whole of life in all its myriad necessities.